In this video, we're going to be taking you through a portable training prop that we designed and constructed a few years ago. There's a few things that we really like about the prop. First, it's very inexpensive. You can build it for anywhere from $150 to $200, depending on the quality of materials that you use. Second, it's extremely portable. There isn't one component in the prop that's longer than 8 feet or wider than 4, so you can transport in the back of a pickup truck and pretty much set it up anywhere. One to two firefighters can assemble it and break it down in minutes. Finally, it's versatile. There's a lot of different techniques that you can practice on this prop. And in the second half of the video, we're going to demonstrate all the techniques that we use it for. But before we get into the demo, I want to take you through the construction and some of the features of the prop. The heart of the prop is the wall itself, which is 4 feet wide and 8 feet high. It's framed out with two exterior verticals, two adjacent verticals which frame out the window opening, and then a fifth vertical which supports the sill plate. It's skinned on both sides with 5 8 plywood. Our sill height is constructed at 5 feet. Our base window opening is 24 inches wide by 33 and a half inches high. We utilize what we call spacer blocks that allow us to decrease the window width by inch and a half increments. And by using these 2x4s, you can simply drill them into the side plate of the window and reduce the width. We have two in place right now, which gives us a a width opening of 21 inches, but we'll go down as narrow as 16 and a half, which is a, a really small window. So you can make it as challenging as you'd like by screwing in those spacer blocks. Another block that we added is what we call a sill riser block, which increases the height of the sill by another almost 10 inches. We use a sill riser block with a 21 inch opening. So you can actually make the window opening very challenging, depending on what type of maneuvers you're practicing. On the front face of the wall, we constructed cutouts. And these are used to simulate what we call sill wall climbing or sill wall stepping. They're placed in various locations, and they're used when you're confronted with a high sill and you don't have anything available to step on, a piece of furniture or a tool that would help you negotiate the sill. If you have a, a lath and plaster or a sheetrock wall with a cavity space or even lightweight paneling, you can kick your foot through that sheeting and climb the wall to help you negotiate a high sill and execute your exit. So it's just another feature that adds some more versatility and allows you to practice another skill. The sill plate and the fascia plate are constructed from EPAIR, Brazilian ironwood. And the reason we chose this material is that it's two to three times stronger than oak. So it's uh, very durable, very resilient, takes a tremendous amount of abuse. We use the front fascia plate, which is removable, so we can practice last stitch anchoring with a Crosby or Narsla. Because of the density of this material, it's going to hold up a lot better than just the uh, oak or pine face of, the, of uh, the plywood itself. We haven't even replaced this yet, so it's, it's worked very well for us. You notice uh, on the sides, the cutouts here, are to practice another personal escape anchoring technique, what we call the tool in the wall. So these are placed uh, just adjacent to the window opening. They also allow us access to assemble the prop, get access to the bolts. The support structure to the prop consists of two by sixes on the bottom, which are eight feet long, and then a cross brace, two by four, which is about seven feet long. The verticals that you see here have absolutely nothing to do with structural integrity. They're here solely for additional anchoring practice with a personal escape system. And you'll see that in the demo, but we use it to simulate wrapping a substantial object or breaching a wall, wrapping a stub. All these members are held in place with 3 8 inch bolts that are 4 inches long. We use washers and wing nuts. And that allows the ease of assembly and disassembly. Again, like I said, it can be done with one firefighter, though it's best with two and it's set up and broken down literally in minutes. Here's what the outside wall of the prop looks like. We've kept it smooth to simulate an exterior wall or an interior wall such as a basement in which you couldn't implement that sill wall stepping or climbing technique. Here's the fascia of that sill riser block. It's held in place with two bolts which connect it to the other side. And you can see when it's in place, it raises the sill height significantly all the way up to about 5 feet 10 inches, which makes it a significant obstacle to negotiate. And you'll see in the demo portion some of the techniques that we use to accomplish this. 
Another component that we add to the prop just recently, within the last year, is a ladder. We had a 24 foot extension ladder that was damaged, but we were able to salvage the fly section. So we cut off the top 75 inches. Now, using this portion just adds even more versatility to the prop itself. If you look at the base of the outside wall, we added a U-bolt about 10 inches off the ground. Now this U-bolt's connected back into the other side of the wall, so it only sticks out about three quarters of an inch. This acts as an anchor for the base of our ladder. We've cut it at 75 inches so it gives us a little lower climbing angle, but still reaches the sill. So we connect it back in, we just secure it. The base of the ladder, it's at an optimal angle to practice various entry and exit techniques. And you'll see that in the demo portion. The last component of the prop is the deck, which is four feet square by 20 inches high. The deck simply adds additional versatility and a platform to work from. It also provides for a sill height of 33 inches, which is considered a mid-range sill. If you like, you can still add a sill riser block and extend that height to 43 inches, which is considered a higher range sill. Now guys, I have absolutely no patents on this prop, nor do I intend to. It's not about making money for me. So if you like the prop and you can use it, feel free to duplicate it, reconstruct it, or improve on it in any way you like. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the demo, and we'll see you next time. When practicing certain maneuvers, it's advisable to use mats or pads for additional safety. If you don't have anything commercially available, you could always use mattresses. Here the firefighter is demonstrating sill wall climbing in combination with a head first rollout. You can practice these techniques with the 5 foot high sill as you see here, or you can incorporate the sill riser block and make the evolutions more challenging. This firefighter is using a tool to negotiate a high sill, specifically a 30 inch halligan bar. But you could also use a flat or pick head axe. Here the firefighter is using a 9 foot loop doubled up in combination with a 6 foot hook. This evolution simulates a firefighter trapped at a basement window with nothing available to stand on. If a rescuer on the exterior has a webbing loop available, they can use it to assist with the extraction. A variation to this technique is using two webbing loops simultaneously which can be used to rescue a heavier or larger firefighter. As we mentioned earlier, the ladder adds versatility to the prop. Here are firefighters practicing the initial mechanics of a VES operation, or vent enter and search. You can make this evolution more challenging by using the 2x4s as spacer blocks to decrease the width of the opening. You could also add the sill riser block and make the opening more challenging as well. Another technique that can be practiced is the head first ladder bail. Here the firefighter is using a hook 2 go 4. You can also practice the ladder slide. Basic maneuvers such as locking in can also be practiced. This firefighter is demonstrating a heel hook, but other techniques can be practiced as well. Using the ladder in combination with a deck allows victim rescue techniques to be practiced, including sill lifts and ladder carries using either a civilian or a firefighter as a victim. The full range of personal escape system anchoring and exit techniques can be practiced on the prop as well. This firefighter is simulating hooking into a substantial object or breaching a wall and wrapping a stud. A key component to this anchoring technique is making sure that you have enough rope so the DCD clears the sill. Hand placement is also critical so you don't get your hand caught underneath the rope. This firefighter is using the tool in the wall technique, 
Notice that the axe blade is facing away from the window opening. Other anchoring techniques that can be practiced include the halligan in the corner of the window, as well as a Crosby or Nars hook. These firefighters are practicing using their escape system for victim rescue. The advantage of this prop is that with its low height and additional padding, you don't have to utilize belay lines.